Citizens Intervention Program is a program designed to assist citizens that are experiencing a heating or cooling crisis, and the household is determined uh, eligible if they are experiencing a crisis and or they're in danger of experiencing a crisis if there's a life-threatening or a health or a health related emergency and timely assistance is not available from any other resource um, for this program applications are taken during the month of July through June 30th July 1 through Ju June 30th so we're taking applications all year long or until funds are exhausted and we take applications at the Department of Social Services from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And they're taken on the second floor at reception desk uh, 23. The second program that we have is called the Low Income Energy Assistance Program. Uh, citizens sometimes refer to it as the LEAP program. And it's a fed federally funded program, and we make a one-time payment to directly to the vendors. Back in the day, somebody might have referred to it to, as the energy check, where it was formally paid directly to the customer, but now we pay directly to the vendor. And um, it helps with their heating and cooling assistance program. Um, formerly, we always sent hundreds of thousands of dollars back. And that's why we came before you tonight to help ask that you would help us get the word out to our citizens. Um, previously, for the last 16 years, these, this program was administered by the Salvation Army. This year, we brought the program back to the Department of Social Services, and that's one reason we wanted to come and let the citizens know that it's not with the Salvation Army anymore, but you come to the Department of Social Services to apply. and. Um, one thing we are doing is this year, on December 7th, we're having an outreach program uh, at Department of Social Services, and we are gearing it towards the elderly and the disabled. Uh, during the month of December, from December 1st to December 31st, we focus on uh, citizens that are age 60 or above, or those who are disabled receiving uh, services through the Division of Aging and Adult Services. And we concentrate on those, but we're doing a, a massive outreach to them on December 7th. We're taking applications at the Department of Social Services from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And if you ever recall during like um, the hurricane, if we've ever had a hurricane, you see we do uh, disaster food stamps at Department of Social Services. So we're doing that type of uh, application um, process for the elderly and disabled on December 7th. So we ask that if you know anyone in need to please ask them to come, especially if they're age 60 or they're disabled, to please come to the Department of Social Services on December 7th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. because that time is set aside just to service them. And we're, we're making all efforts to get them in and out very quickly. The uh, things that they will need to bring with them is a, a ID, social security number. If they don't have their card, that's fine. If they have the number, a copy of their heating bill, and um, a proof of any type of income they may have. Then during the month of January, February, and March, any other citizens throughout the county can, uh, as long as they're a resident of Cumberland County, they can make an application at the Department of Social Services, and we will be taking those applications from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we just uh, ask that you just help us get the information out to our citizens. Last year, we, we sent back almost $600,000, and we want our citizens to take advantage of the benefits wow. that are available to them. So we don't want to send back any money. So we want uh, everyone to help us get the word out. I left some flyers back on the table. So if, uh, uh, if you know of anyone, anyone elderly, anyone low income, um, just ask them to please come and take advantage of the funding that is available. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, I have a special presentation. We honor our volunteers and we have a process where you can be nominated as volunteer of the month this gentleman has volunteered 145 hours with cape fear cert 
so far this year. He is also a disaster volunteer with the Red Cross, and he is a chaplain. And he's very involved also in our VFW. So at this time, I'd like to recognize our Volunteer of the Month to Mr. Mark Bryan. have a special proclamation this is whereas heroes homecoming is a way of showing all veterans that we remember and appreciate their courage and sacrifice to defend our great country now and forever whereas the town of Hope Mills honors our veterans and participates in the ceremony memorial services of honor of the many resident veterans whereas the events from November 7th 2019 through November the 11th 2019 known as Heroes Homecoming 7 will include services at different times and locations throughout the town of Hope Mills to include Low Country Boil at Dirt Bag Ales, Hope Mills Fall Festival and Chili Cook-Off at Dirt Bag Ales, Armistice Day Bell Ringing and Reading of the Names at the Town Hall Gazebo, Annual Veterans Day Ceremony at the Hope Mills Veterans Park and the Field of Flags at the Hope Mills Veterans Memorial. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Jackie Warner, Mayor of the Town of Hope Mills, do hereby proclaim November the 7th through the 11th, 2019, as Heroes Homecoming 7 in Hope Mills, to honor our veterans, the living, the disabled, and the dead, and urge all citizens to join us in honoring them and remembering their service. And I'd like to thank those members of our Veterans Affairs Committee and also uh, Commissioner Bellflowers, who attends, and myself, uh, the Heroes Homecoming is something that we've been involved with as uh, several municipalities in Cumberland County and it's been a, a great experience because <clears throat> these communities come together to plan the events and these are events honoring our veterans and honoring um, also anybody that's active duty because we want them to know that we appreciate them and a lot of the spouses are recognized so just let you know that this is something that Hope Mill's been involved with for this is our fourth year I believe mm, might be fifth, fifth. It's our fifth year. So we've been involved um, and we're included um, because they realize the number of veterans that we have in Hope Mills. And on that same note, I just want to bring to your attention something that I wasn't aware of, and I do want to make sure our community knows this, but um, Mission Barbecue, they have a, a great program, and it's also for police and fire. They, they call it the HEROES program. You can go and register and you get special benefits. But on Veterans Day, they actually are feeding the veterans there. And so if you, you know, I'll try to get some information out on my, on my Facebook page and through the, maybe through the town. But I think it's very special that they're honoring our veterans all day long on Veterans Day, free meal. The next <coughs> proclamation I have is, whereas Veterans Day is the day America sets aside to thank and honor all those who served honorably in our nation's military, whereas Veterans Day is a day to honor veterans, to acknowledge that their contributions to our national security are appreciated, and to underscore the fact that all those who have served have sacrificed and done their duty. Whereas America is greatly indebted to those who have sacrificed for the liberty and security of our country, and whereas tens of millions of Americans have served in the armed forces and hundreds of thousands of Americans have given their lives while serving in the armed forces during the past century. Whereas the contributions and sacrifices of men and women who served in the armed forces have been vital in maintaining the freedoms and way of life enjoyed by the people of the United States. Whereas armed forces, armed forces members have been unrelenting in battle, unwavering in loyalty and unmatched in honor and have demonstrated that freedom is the most powerful force on earth. Whereas VFW Post 10630 and Auxiliary have coordinated with other veterans and civic organizations in the Hope Mills area to provide the special ceremony of remembrance. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Jackie Warner, Mayor of the Town of Hope Mills, do hereby proclaim Monday, November the 11th, 2019, as Veterans Day in the Town of Hope Mills in tribute to all the veterans of all wars, the living, the disabled, and the dead, and urge all citizens to join the expression of appreciation to the many veterans in our community who have given so much in our behalf in times of both war and peace. 
And Mayor, may I add that the ceremony starts at 3 on Monday. Okay, 3 o'clock, and it will be out by the Veterans Memorial. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have our manager's report. Thank you, Madam Mayor, the Board of Commissioners. Uh, update to the Rockfish Road sidewalk project. FAMPO and NCD NCDOT have given tentative permission to investigate the possibility of constructing a sidewalk on the opposite side of Rockfish Road, beginning across from Johnson Street to Park Avenue. Charles Hughes Construction has been unable to commit to a start on the project while school is in session. Charles Hughes Construction has proposed this idea to McGill and Associates as an option since the traffic plan for the other side was not approved by NCDOT. I would like to get a general consensus from the board as to whether or not you would be in favor of staff investigating this option further. Johnson Street Sidewalk Project, staff is waiting on the fee schedule for the S CSX Utilities Review. The ADA Transition Program with Stewart Incorporated, staff is continuing to conduct the self-evaluations. In addition, we are researching agencies to fulfill our community involvement requirements. The full survey of the former golf course property is on schedule to be completed by November the 20th. And an update on the temporary driveway and parking lot at Golf View Greenway. The surveyor completed the existing conditions survey last week and they have begun the design of the parking lot and path to the existing walkway. They anticipate sending public works staff a preliminary design next week and also complete the driveway permit application for NCDOT for the temporary driveway. The ADA signage, mile markers, and directional, directional signage has been ordered. The dual trash and recycling containers, one pet waste station has already been installed, but an additional pet waste station and two water cooler stations have also been ordered. The fall eel migration season has concluded and a report of the findings has been sent to the proper agencies. Representatives of Schnabel Engineering will be taking drone footage of the Hope Mills Lake and Dam on Friday, October the 25th. The demolition of the Fountain Rain House has begun in compliance with our state notification with the removal of a tree so that equipment can be mobilized on site. The remainder of the demolition will take place this week. As I have previously reported, the Town of Hope Mills is working with NC Commerce on a study of the Town of Hope Mills Municipal Influence Area, or the MIA. North Carolina Commerce staff is currently preparing material for the next meeting with the coalition built by planning and development staff to study the Town of Hope Mills Municipal Influence Area. Section 1 of the overall plan is being drafted and the North Carolina Department of Commerce, Labor and Economic Division is conducting an M-Plan, which is an impact analysis for planning, economic analysis, which is defined as an economic input-output model for the plan. North Carolina Commerce staff is also coordinating with Fayetteville Cumberland Economic Development Corporation staff to provide data that will be utilized into the modeling of the M plan. Once the draft of section one of the plan is complete, the coalition will reconvene to review the plan outline, review the GIS maps that have been prepared for each of the three focus areas, and discuss when to have the first public meeting and also to work on the draft plan mission statement. Mayor Warner, Development and Planning Administrator Chancellor McLaughlin, Parks and Recreation Director LaMarco Morrison, Town Clerk James Starling, and I attended a green growth workshop hosted by the Moore County Planning Department on Friday, October the 18th located at the Weymouth Woods State Park in Southern Pines. The Green Growth Toolbox is a non-regulatory effort 
led by the Wildlife Diversity Program of the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. The toolbox consists of handbook, a GIS data package, and website access, and provides North Carolina municipalities with tools, land use planning methods, and case studies aimed at conserving wildlife and natural resources as they grow. The training provided staff with information tied to three levels of planning outlined in the Green Growth Toolbox, visioning and plan making, ordinance and rule setting, and development and design review. Members of the North Carolina Commerce team that Hope Mills is currently working with to study our MIA were in attendance at this training, which led us to engaging the staff with the Wildlife Diversity Program to not only assist in our MIA study, but to work with planning and development staff on the implementation of changes to the tree preservation section of our zoning ordinance. <clears throat> code enforcement. During the last week, over 40 code violation notices for junk vehicles, public nuisance, weeded lot, minimum housing standards, were given out in the following neighborhoods. Village Green, Fox Meadow, Eaglewood Forest, South Hampton, Johnson Street, Bon Air Place, Hill Street, Fairway Forest, Banks Court Apartments, Meadowbrook, Forest Lakes, Brightmoor, Kings Mill, Creek Bend, Friendship, and Woodland Hills. Update on a couple of zoning cases. Case P1939, a zoning request to rezone 1.12 acres from R6A and R10 to CP was heard by the Cumberland County Joint Planning Board on October 15th and was recommended for approval. This case is set to be considered by the Hope Mills Board of Commissioners on November the 18th. Case P1940, the sidewalk amendment, the case was heard by the Cumberland County Joint Planning Board on October 15th and was recommended for approval. I have previously reported to you that that case would be heard by the Hope Mills Board of Commissioners on November 4th. However, the Cumberland County Planning Department has informed staff that the case is set to be considered by the Hope Mills Board <coughs> of Commissioners on November the 18th. And finally, Sally Bailey has been nominated and voted to serve as the chairperson of the Fayetteville Cumberland Joint Appearance Commission beginning October 2019 and serving to October 2020. The Board of Commissioners may wish to give a recommendation by consensus to recommend her approval as chairperson for the entire 2019-2020 session. Otherwise, she may have to be reappointed in January. And that concludes my <clears throat> I would like to ask the board for recommendation that we approve Miss mm -hmm. Bailey for the full term. Do we have someone that would make that I'll motion? Make that motion. Okay, have a motion. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. Congratulations. Madam Mayor, Mayor, Mayor. <laughs> yes, sir. <clears throat> Miss Adams, you you mentioned the sidewalk moving to the other side of Rockfish Road. Yes, sir. Uh, the, the construction company. Um, is unable to mobilize with school in session um, because of the, the restrictions that NCDOT puts on lane closures. Um, so he's offered that as a possible alternative. We've had a <coughs> conversation with FAMPO and with NCDOT. They've sort of tentatively given us the go ahead to investigate that. Um, so I don't, you know, I don't know how you all feel about it, but it would. My, my idea of the sidewalks change. years ago was for the benefit of the school children. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how a sidewalk on this side is going to really benefit school children without a, uh, additional crossing guards and things to get them across the street. So I don't know. Uh, I is guess it's it would... running parallel to the walking track? No, it would end at Park. So it would run from directly across from 
Johnson um, and come up and end at Park, um, right, the entrance into park, uh, the Parks and Rec Department. So there won't be a sidewalk at all in front of the school? The uh, other option is my understanding from the the negotiations between the construction company and McGill is that he needs to wait until school is out of session. So next summer. Could he do anything during Christmas? Or is it too cold? Not enough time to do that Not project. By the time he got everything mobilized and yeah. Is this the same company that's had all this stuff laying over there for two years? Yes, sir. What happened the last summer and the summer before? I know you don't know that answer to that question, but I'm just asking. There was no school then, so why they didn't do it then? He brought this on himself. Mad Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. The main goal of this sidewalk project has always been to provide the children a walkway in front of that school. It's never been about convenience of a choice of which side of the road to put it on. We stay the course. And if we have to find another contractor, that's what we do. But it's it, but this is not for the contractor. What we're doing is for the children of that school, children of our community. And that is who we have to look at. Thank you, Commissioner Lake. Mayor, Mayor, Mayor. Yes. I'm sorry, go ahead. Mayor. I, I can't see it from here. But on the map for the rockfish widening, they show, DOT shows the sidewalk actually on running parallel to our walking trail. And the explanation I was given at the, um, the, the meeting that they had held at the school was that it wasn't approved yet that we were going to have a sidewalk on the other side and they were only going to put sidewalks on one side and that will be the side that they put it on so i'm i agree with mr bellflowers that i mean the main one was that we wanted it on the side of the school so if they're only going to put it once they do the widening over on town hall side running parallel to the walking track that seems kind of pointless it's only coming to park avenue anyway i mean according to the, what you just told us so nothing in your presentation said anything about any frontage of the school no if it if if they do do the other side it is supposed to come up to past the school or to the right over in here somewhere i can't I'm not sure but the, the stopping it at Park Avenue was only if it was moved to the other side. Is there a reason that they give for one on this side of the road instead of the other? The way the traffic plan, we, um, he, he would be able to mobilize for um, a longer length of time during the day to work. Otherwise, if he's on the other side, the traffic plan that he proposed, DOT denied it. So um, it won't allow him to mobilize, but only a few hours each day because of school. So I got to say, he just, he just blew two whole summers. But he could have been working on it. I agree with Mr. Belfire. Maybe we'll start looking for somebody that wants to work. I don't mean that to be belligerent. I'm just saying I don't want to back up and start over again, but uh, we've had problems with this contractor from day one. We shouldn't change focus. And so the general consensus is to carry yeah. on, carry yeah, on carry with on the on main God. grant. Stay yeah. the course. And the original grant, it was to go from Golf View to Johnson. Yeah. So it actually started up yeah. at the intersection and went all the way down. Yeah. Okay. Mayor, before yes. we move on, there's another issue. I wanted to comment about the walking trail. Okay. Yeah. Um, I apologize for not making the uh, ribbon cutting. I was at another event on campus. Um, but I would like to discuss some, uh, some language change regarding bicycles at uh, 
on the walking track on the Greenway on the Greenway Park, I guess that's what we're calling it now. Golf yeah, Golf View Greenway. I'd like to uh, the board to consider allowing bicycles on the track as long as they yield for walkers on the track. So the language that I would pr propose to the board would be bicycles are permitted but must yield to walkers on the track. Discussion. So that's my motion. All right, you put that in the form of a motion. Discussion. I, su I support that, Madam Mayor. Um, that was my only objection to the approval last time at the last minute. Commissioner Wade, I think it's a good idea that we let the bicycles on there. And my only concern was that they wouldn't yield. So if. Who's going to police them? They have to police themselves <laughs> so they'll come up there again. Yes, that's going to be the only. Yes, ma'am. That would be my reason for not going along with it is because unless you have somebody out there to direct them and say that you have to yield, you're going to run into problems. I don't think everybody's going to yield. Well, who, well, who, who addresses pets out there? Who makes them clean up after their pets? It's well, I'm not going to follow them. <laughs> I mean, for the vote, it just Mayor. seems like it's putting more work on staff and, and everything. All right, we have we have a motion on the floor to allow. Is there any anything that was brought up before? That there's a concern. I guess I should ask Miss Adams. I know. There were some concerns before. Is there anything that Parks and Rec would have with the concern? Um, the only concern was um, Parks and Rec Director um, Lamarca Morrison had you know, indicated that because the the cart path is you know only so wide, but if they you know yield to the walkers, then my conversation with Commissioner Bellflowers about it earlier was that we could try it. If it becomes a problem and an issue and we're receiving a lot of complaints, yeah. we can always go back and say they're not permitted. Yeah. So, um, uh, and, I, and I agree with you, Melissa, and, and, and Mayor Pro Tem, you know, I gave this some thought, too, after our last conversation. And, you know, we can, we can try it. You're right. We can try it, see where it goes. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, we can always resend it. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to allow bikes up at the Golf View Trailway with the understanding that they'll yield to the walkers. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Any opposed? So it's 4-1, so the ayes have it. Thank okay, you, Mayor. You're welcome. Next, we have public comments, and we have uh, Beth Cooper. Elizabeth, also known as Beth Cooper, 4413 Goldenrod Court, Parkton, North Carolina, but I am a resident of Hope Mills. I wanted to briefly touch on politics here in Hope Mills. Um, I'm the kind of person that if I say something or I do something, I'm going to do it and own it that I did it. I recently published two different videos on Facebook about just terrible things and it hurt my heart it, I struggled to produce one of those videos because there's a lot of information that I did not want out there representing this wonderful town but and there's always a but our voters need to know who they're voting for they need to know your actions what you have done and what you haven't done You've been in place almost two years now. And I'm sorry, but if the people actually knew what happened at these meetings, y'all wouldn't get elected. There's no way that you can do things like ignore what Pat Hall did, but then prevent Ms. Blevins from being on a board, and she didn't do anything other than speak her version of the truth and own it. She doesn't make any questions about what she writes. She owns what she writes, okay? You don't 
as politicians representing the town of Hope Mills, you don't own what you say. You say one thing, and then you do something completely different. You say, oh, we're only going to have people on our boards that are in harmony with the mission of the town of Hope Mills. And then you allow something like what Pat Hall did on the mayor's page of all places. She posted it on the mayor's page. And, you know, y'all just give her a pass. Doesn't the, the mayor deserve some respect? You're going to allow somebody who represents this town because you allow it. Do something like that. Post nasty, hostile, evil stuff on the mayor's page for all the world to see. That's what you bring to this town. You got a short period of time left up there. I would hate to think that you would use that time for more ill, terrible things. Change your focus. I'm tired of having to hold you accountable for your actions by putting these things on Facebook and by showing up here and calling you out on it every time. That concludes our public comments. Next, we have a consent agenda. I'll read the consent agenda. If there's anything you'd like moved to new business, we may do so. Consideration of approval of the minutes from the September 9th, 2019 special meeting. Consideration of approval of the minutes from the October 7th, 2019th regular meeting. Approval of resolution 2019-22, accepting an offer of dedication of public right of way. Approval of Ordinance 2019-06, declaring a road closure during the parachuting into Veterans Park. Approval of Resolution Number 2019-23 for disposal of items from the Administration and Police Department. Acceptance of Budget Amendment Number 5, addition of $4,675 to General Fund from Parks and Recreation Insurance Claim, and acceptance of the September 2019 Financial Statement. Is there anything you'd like moved? If not, do I have a motion to approve Madam the consent Mayor, like, um, Item B pulled, please. B is boy. Item B, with consideration of approval of minutes from October 7th. Yes, ma'am. Now be going under new business, be which would C. be item C. Is there any other items that you'd like moved? If not, do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda with one item being moved, which would be item B. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. We have no old business. New business, we have consideration of approval of a bid submitted by Benjamin Stout Construction in the amount of $158,783.90 to perform the mod modifications to the temporary police station building located at 3800 South Main Street. And this is behind tab 11. And I guess turn it over to Ms. Adams. Um, yeah, I guess um, Chief and um, Chief Pichardo and um, our finance director, Drew Holland, if there's any questions be able to answer. Good evening. Good evening, sir. There's also a representative of the company here, too, in case there's some technical questions. Do we know when the bid process will be going again on the public safety building? Um, they're in the works of designing the building right now. So, um, Drew, do you have an idea? It would be probably what, February? Oh, when, when will the bids be going out for the public safety building? For the new Certain building. building. Uh, The construction drawings are being completed now. The original plan was that they'd be finished December-ish and possibly going to bid January or February. Our estimated cost still at 15.5 million or? Is it? Our estimated cost for a public safety building still 
It's going to be between that and 16. I mean, we that's the estimate. We won't know until we get bids in, but we've based on the, um, the architect's drawings and what he's gotten feedback from folks that he's used before, that's the numbers that, that he's been given. Any other questions? But that's not what we're looking at tonight. Right. We're just looking at the temporary, the bid for the temporary facility at this point. Yes, Madam Mayor, I have yes, sir. a question, if you don't mind. Okay. Why is it costing so much for a temporary facility that we're already paying $20,000 in the rear on already? When we rent that, July? We started in April. April, May, June, July. That's for three years. August. But we paid by the month. We pay for the month, isn't it? Five thousand dollars a it's month. It's five thousand, yes, sir. Add those months up, we're approaching a bunch more money to go on top of this hundred and fifty eight thousand. What are we doing there that because when we get to it, we tear it down. I mean we tear it out. Well at this point we don't know if we'll have to tear it out or not. That's up to the owners when the lease is up. Well if we don't, that's just improvement and we lose that money. We lose that hundred and fifty eight thousand dollars. Is there a way that we can get around this? without having to spend all that money? Um, and that's an excellent question. Um, the reason we have gone from when we first started renting it to this point is because we have been working exceedingly hard to get the bid price down. Um, and I have to tell you, um, uh, the construction folks, been st they've been very accommodating with us because as the first low bid came in, which was in excess of $200,000. Um, we went in there and started doing modifications and ripping out everything you could humanly rip out. Um, if, and I, I, I apologize, I did not download the uh, agenda. So I'm only going off of mine. So I hope you guys have a copy of the plans on there. Uh, basically, when you look at this, there is one of the plans that is just the existing building. And that's your four walls. Yeah. Then you'll look and there should be another plan on there that has the actual blueprint drawing. All this is, is walls and a half ceiling. There is no floor, there is no frill. There is only the bare minimum so that we can be statutory compliant with um, our records retention, our juvenile uh, files retention, and our evidence room. Everything else is as bare bones as could humanly be done. Um, some of the things that cropped up during the course of this pro project was um, ADA compliance. There were certain things that we just absolutely had to do to make the building ADA compliant for what we're going to be using it for. Um, we're a public, it's going to be a public building. Now, let, let me back it up and put it in context. We're basically taking a full service police station with all that that entails and we're picking it up and we're moving it to a temporary site. And once at the temporary site, it's our obligation to be able to continue to provide full service police services. Um, that means when we seize a weapon or drugs, we're statutorily required to maintain it, guard it, protect it, keep it safe for court. If we do a juvenile, issue a petition a whatever statute requires us to keep juvenile files completely separate from everything else and the only people that can even access those files are police officers um, so that means another challenge um, so these are the things that we were dealing with and i have to tell you the building's owner mr autry has been so patient with us uh, because we've some of this stuff, in order to get us ADA compliant, we've had to go in there and do modifications to his building. Um, and he's been very understanding about that. Um, that gets me back to uh, it's a public building. So it's a public building, you have to provide public restroom. Public restrooms, or the restrooms, are at the back of the building. So we have, that's another challenge. We have to get the public back to the restroom. Well, you can't get the public back to the restroom and dead end them out there. You have to give them an exit. Um, so that's one of the things we had to go to. 
the restrooms that were in there were not ADA compliant. So those have to be modified. So uh, you have to do all this while maintaining the integrity of the other things I just mentioned. And you have to provide for the safety of your administrative staff, who uh, probably 70% of the time are in the building by themselves. Um, and it just is the world we live in today. If you're going to put them there, you have to make sure they're safe. Even in the existing building we have right now, we've had people break out into fights in the lobbies. We had one lady try to run her husband over with a car in our front parking lot. Um, he was lucky. She missed him by that much. Got his car, though. Uh, these things happen. So it's a police station. You're going to have admin staff there. If you put them there, you have to make sure they're safe. That means you have to limit the access. Um, so that was another challenge we had to do because in limiting the access while providing access to the restroom, you have to get this long corridor to get people to where the restroom is while they don't have access to the rest of the internal workings of your building. Now, a lot of the stuff that are the day-to-day -day things, um, workbenches, uh, uh, paperwork areas, stuff like we're going to do ourselves. Um, we'll do that internally. We're splitting up some of the items that we can store bulk over at the, uh, uh, the new go uh, golf course walking park. I'm sorry, I got it wrong. I apologize. Um, but we're going to store those over there. Uh, so there will be some of our folks that will be split, like uh, Lieutenant Sumner's folks. His main operations area is going to be out of the golf course area. Um, we have stuff set up for him to do that when we actually start moving. Um, but in answer to your question, sir, the price, I'm not thrilled with it. I'm not thrilled that we have to be moving. But this is one step that we have to take to get to the end product, which is the public safety facility. Now, just as a contextual thing, when we started the public safety facility project, that was back in 2017 when everybody got the go-ahead to keep going on, um, this wasn't an issue. This cropped up after we had already started the journey to get to that end product. Um, and that was the widening of Rockfish Road. And because Rockfish Road is going to be widened, Everything with that facility got pushed back. And that's where the end product, the public safety facility, can't get there until we get out of that building. And I can assure you, nobody in that building right now wants to pick up everything and move to a temporary site to pick up everything and move to a permanent site. But they understand that it's a necessity. I th personally, I think that our police department is something that I think our citizens would not worry about us spending money to make sure that you're safe and also to make sure that we have the availability of our police force I do not I, I question having to make you justify everything because this is something that we're very fortunate in that our police department is excellent and we know they've got to move and we know they've got to have the best housing they can have and if that means spending money to do that we're gonna to have to do that I just believe that um, you know we need to take care of our police department and I think our public wants us to have the great force that we have and we don't want to inconvenience you when we move you so that you can't do the job the excellent job that you currently are doing and that's just my opinion I I just don't believe our citizens I think anytime we mention public safety our citizens have come to rally behind you when we needed to hire additional staff it happened no one complained I don't believe that will be an issue now when they know that we've got to do this in order to have a safe place for you while the construction is taking place any other comments I just have one other question the the fiber optics were have we already paid for the the fiber optics outfit or is yeah. that included that's in already been installed and paid for how much was that um, that was 15 was it nine thousand something nine i'm that sorry the, the other pwc the other site was there's the sheriff's line that we yeah. had to install into the building so yeah i guess for this whole project we're talking around 370 counting the rent that we're paying for for the temporary yeah well if you're including the the lease price and the construction and that and there's going to be some other small things i'm sure it comes up but if you look at 
what we're gaining in this building or what we're not having to spend on, the secure aspect of it. It's already got the fencing. It's already got the security that we need. So we don't have to pay. If we had done anything else, we would have had to install a lot of the things to the outside of the building that we're not having to do to this building. Um, the location is a prime area that the police would like to have a presence in. That was also a, a plus factor in this. Um, if we had done this anywhere else, the cost to add that sheriff's line would have been three times what it cost to put it to this facility because we looked at other locations and we had to rule them out based on those other costs that we're not having to pay here. So any other option that we had looked at before would have actually been more than this. And if it was any other building, even if it was a building that we were to purchase, if we were to use that facility for something else that the town would use in the future, we'd still have to go in and modify whatever we did for this purpose anyways. So there'd still be more costs associated with that in the future. Drew, are we rolling this up into some debt service? Um, is it currently budgeted or it's in the CIP? No, what we're going to do once this is approved, I'm going to start working on the capital project budget for the entire project, and then that's going to come to you probably in November or December. And this will be included? And this will be, excuse me, Mayor. This will be part of the general yeah. fund budget because we can't fund this through the capital project because USDA, we can't make this part of the loan package because they would have required us to use the same contractor for this as we're going to use for the whole facility. Well, we don't even know who the contractor is going to be for the full facility yet because it's not even finished being designed. So we're going to have to separate this. So we'll have the capital project okay. budget and then the portion that's going to be in the general fund. And one thing that's going to change that we're going to flip, the lease for the current facility can be paid for by the USDA loan, which is currently in the general fund. So we're going to switch that to the capital project, and then the general fund budget will pick up the cost of this, the renovations to the temporary building. So the lease pretty much offsets the It'll uh, be capital close, not exact, but mm -hmm. it'll, I'll have to close. add some. Because the lease was going to be extended over the whole three years, this is more of a one time. So we'll just be paying most of it up front. Thank you for your work on that. Mayor Warner. Yes, ma'am. Um, may I make a motion? I just have one comment. I've got, and, and then I've got some comments too. Ready to. Can it be after the motion? She can sure. be after the motion. She's sure. requested the motion first. I'd like to go ahead and make a motion that we approve the bid submitted by Benjamin Stout Construction in the amount of 158783 dollars to perform the modifications to the building located at 3800 South Main Street, Hope Mills, North Carolina. I have a motion. Now discussion. Uh, Commissioner Larson? Um, I agree with the mayor that I think that the majority of citizens do not have a problem. I think it's just important to get an explanation of how money's spent so that when they watch the video that, you know, they're not just seeing $158,000 and us just, you know, saying, yeah, let's do it and without giving them some sort of explanation of where that money's going. So I hope you didn't think we're drilling you or anything like that. Of course, anything that we ever bring before you, right. we've already got to the point that we would not bring it to you if we weren't able to do it. Right. As we right. said before, some of the earlier bids that we have, the reason we didn't bring those to you is because we couldn't do those and we didn't want to do those. Right. So we got it to a point where we can make this work, and so now we're bringing it to you. Okay. Commissioner Bellflowers? And I agree with you also, uh, Madam Mayor. <coughs> Our police department is top, second to none. Our community knows that. Every, hopefully everyone in this room knows that. When this issue was first brought up about nine months ago, along the way we were talking about the temporary building. At that point, I remember it clearly, that uh, I, was, I was looking at purchasing that building, knowing that we were going to have to spend some type of money on renovations. I didn't think it was going to be 158000 I'll just be flat honest with you. So, I also noticed that with the 158, there's no contingency either. There's no contingency fund at all in this. Right. It's a straight 158. That'll be included when we bring the budget amendment. We're just bringing you the amount by the actual bid. <laughs> oh, okay. So. What's the contingency we'll going to look like then? We'll recommend. We usually do about 5%. All right. But as basic as we've got this plan, 
There really shouldn't it be, be a lot really of contingency. To go up. Yeah. Um, I ain't saying it wouldn't. I'm just saying it would be really hard. Um, the designers would be very accommodating to getting the price down to something that's tolerable for the project as a whole. Um, could happen, but I'd be very surprised if it did. Well, Chief and Drew, we all know that bids are bids. Things happen, and sometimes cost escalates. It's happened right here on projects that we've had in this town. Are we putting a new HVAC system in for 16-2? Is that what we're doing? Yes, sir. And so, but we're going to leave that when, when we're finished with the lease. It's my understanding it's going to be up to, yeah, the, up to the owner of the building. Owner. We may have to take it all out, or we may get to leave it as it is. And 25000 for electrical redesign as well. Yes, sir. Okay. Keep in mind, and that's a, actually that's an excellent question. Keep in mind you're going to be putting in about 20 workstations mm -hmm. in various forms with mm -hmm. computer, server, uh, video monitoring, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. The current electrical system in there now will not handle that. It just We're doing a lot of work on this building to continue the lease for three years to move from that building back to our permanent building. Really would be nice to keep it, wouldn't it? Really would be an alternate location for our outstanding police department. Yeah. I'm good. Very good. All right. Yeah, All I'm those, good. any, any other good. discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Seeing none opposed. You opposing? No. no. Yeah. Oh, okay. You okay. Yes, thank you very much. I was going to add something to it, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate uh -huh. it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I was going to add something. I think you kept your hand down. All right. All right. Well, Next thing control. under new business is consideration of an addition. Uh, would be a discussion of possible action repairs to Veterans Monument. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I believe at the last meeting, Commissioner Bellflower mm -hmm. had uh, brought this issue up that the monument needs some repair. And so um, we had, I had forgotten to place it on the agenda, and I apologize. So we've added it as, as an addendum. Um, I believe what he's looking for is for you all to direct me to have the public works staff, um, public works director Don Cisco is very familiar with the issue with the monument. He has been to the veterans um, meeting. He has discussed it with them. And um, I think he would like for you all to direct me to have him investigate the cost and bring that forward to you all for repair. Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. I'll just add in that at the last Veterans Affairs Committee meeting, and we have another one this week on Thursday night, uh, there's been a number of cracks in the monument that need some repair. Don and his team looked at that and made an evaluation of it. The, the issue is there's no one locally that really works on the monument, so it's going to be there's one, there's one company in South Carolina that, that uh, installs monuments and they fix monuments and repair monuments. So they felt, they being done, felt they didn't want to proceed unless there was a consensus of the board to direct uh, our town manager to green light them calling this company down in South Carolina and having them come up and look at it and see what they can do to repair it. It's either we repair the monument or we're going to lose the monument. That's where it's at. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Bill Flowers, do you, you think obviously Veterans Day is right on us? Yeah. So, uh, is it is it in such a shape that we need to get it fixed before Memorial? I mean, before before no. Veterans Day? No. no, but it's 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 a maintenance issue. It's there's some cracks in it um, that need to be addressed. It's not it's not like it's going to fall down today or even the next two weeks, but it's going to have to be addressed. And, uh, and that's why they wanted the direction of the board. 
So we're just asking to authorize the town manager to investigate mm -hmm. what could be done. And bring back quotes. Bring back quotes. That's all that it is. Yes, I, may, I will make quotes. that motion that we authorize the town manager to, to make that contact and bring a quote back to us. Okay, I have a motion. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Mm -hmm. Seeing none opposed. Next item is the minutes from October the 7th. <coughs> Madam Mayor, just had a quick uh, edit on the when we voted on the Gulfview Greenway for walkers, runners, and dogs, and uh, but no bicycles. I had explicitly stated my reason for voting no was because um, of the no bicycle uh, element in that, and uh, it's in the minutes. It's in the, it's in the audio. I, I would like that. Um, explicitly written there how would you like that to read just um well it's on the audio but i i just basically said that i couldn't support the motion because i do believe that bicycles should be allowed and of course we passed that already tonight and i appreciate uh my fellow commissioners allowing that tonight so um if, if we can make that one edit then i'll be good with it and i'll make a motion to approve those minutes from uh october the 7th 2019 or you need to bring it back? Bring it back? Okay. Yeah. Okay, then. I'll withdraw my motion. Yeah. Then. Thank you. Thank you. And just for uh, future reference, when you receive your agenda, um, you could at that time have requested this, and then she could have made that correction before the meeting tonight and could have included that correction in the agenda item. So for anyone that finds something like that, if you'll just notify Ms. Starling, and then she can make that take take care of that prior to the meeting okay next we have um uh, the, we have items and reminders appearance commission coming up veterans affairs committee parks and rec advisory committee trunk or treat on october 31st um and then the our next meeting is november the 4th at 7 p.m uh, any staff comments Yeah. Okay, official comments. I'll start with um, Commissioner Bellflowers. Mayor, there's two things I want to address in my official comments. Okay. One of them's a little long. First one is that um, there's an organization that's going to be looking at on a walkthrough of the parish house as a community project and that organization is Fayetteville Technical Community College. The construction uh, department on campus uh, will be scheduling a meeting to review and walk through the parish house as a possible project for our community college students beginning in the spring where all three departments will have the opportunity to work on the parish house. Now that's the labor piece. Now the materials piece will not be provided by the campus. And this also follows about the same footprint that some 30 years ago, a partnership between the town of Oak Mills and Fayetteville Technical Community College resulted in the new pol that police house, not new, at that time it was, the police station that we have now that was the partnership some 35 years ago was that the community college students would build the police station which they did senator tony ran at that time went to the ga general assembly and he authorized general assembly or he begged them for the money for the materials materials was delivered college students shown up and they built the police house and it stood out there for 30 some years so the same opportunity is before us now uh, to, uh, to look at the parish house. And I just want to say that it's a, it's a pure partnership of opportunity to save a 90-year-old historic building, if it can be saved. And, it, and who better to work on something like that and to learn something from that parish house? Because if you look at all of the 
the damage that's in it. It's plumbing, it's roofing, it's electrical, it's HVAC, it's everything. And it's all in one building. So I just wanted to make note of that. Second issue, and I wasn't really going to talk about this, but I am. And I beg the board's understanding. Since our last meeting, there have still been issues and references, and even tonight, the <laughs> comments made by Pat Hall. I called Pat Hall in the past couple weeks. And I'm going to read you what she said. I wrote it down. I called her about these comments on Mayor Warner's Facebook page. And during our conversation, here's what Pat said. And she's out of town, by the way, until late November. She said she's not a racist. She didn't post racist comments. She forwarded her comments by messenger and did not post them. She told several people that she thought her Facebook page had been hacked several days before these comments ever shown up. Comments were directed toward the mayor and only Mayor Warner. In fact, she said she had a conversation directly with Mayor Warner about these comments. And Mayor Warner knows full well the comments were directed to only her. After learning about the posted comments, the comments were removed immediately from the Facebook page. She deeply regrets this ugly situation, sincerely apologizes to the family in the photo that she said she never saw and only knew about these comments that she sent by messenger. Commissioner Bellflowers, just so you know, I have not spoken to Ms. Hall in reference to any of this. She has not spoken to me about okay. this. Well, Nothing. I'm just, like I said, these well, are the I comments just want that, that she that told in, me over the phone. Okay, we'll put that in the record that she has not talked to me. Okay. I was at Old Mill Day's reunion. She had an opportunity there. She could have said something. She, has, she said nothing. Okay. So there has been no, no comments. Well, I just wanted to share the phone call that I had with her. There had been some questions that this wasn't going to be addressed or, or, or even a phone call made. Um, so I made the call myself, and this is what she said. And I just wanted it on the record, too, Mayor, that uh, this is what she told me during our conversation. Thank you. Ms. Ed Commissioner Edwards. I wasn't going to say anything, but now that there's other things being mentioned and all, um, I was going to make a statement before the final vote on the police service department. Um, I was just amazed by some of the questioning, some of the questions that were asked uh, to our chief and, and the police department. They have been waiting for years for something like this to um, to happen and to improve the situation, and 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 they've really been very very patient about it. And for anybody to question anything that we're doing right now, based on all the money, the frivolous money that we have spent in the past two years on nothing, um, and has gained nothing from it, I just thought it was. I just didn't think it was just right to question Drew or the chief on any of this. That was just my comment. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem. <clears throat> Couple things. Uh, information from social services. Town Manager Adams, is there any way we can um, somehow promote their programs through our social media? Yes. Either through the Hope Mills administration. Provide a link. She mentioned that one date on December the seventh to be crucial for the energy program. So um, that would be good. Um, in regards to the police department uh, temporary situation, I've, I've never considered us a rubber stamp board, so we're here to represent the citizens and ask questions and to clarify, um, you know, still 160 grand of taxpayer money, 
you know, for us just to rubber stamp something without asking questions would be irresponsible to our constituents, and uh, they deserve better. Um, and then also, um, I'd like to thank everybody that came out for the uh, ribbon cutting at the uh, Golf View Greenway. We hope the citizens will enjoy that space for walking, and uh, and now uh, children on bicycles can uh, also ride their bikes out there with their parents or their siblings. And um, anyways, uh, that's all I have. Appreciate it. Okay, Commissioner Larson. Um, we had a great turnout. Thank you for the staff for getting the. Uh, golf course ready and um, for the chamber for their participation in it as well it was a nice turnout it was nice to see all the families coming up while we were all out there so um, I will reiterate that it would be irresponsible not to ask for fiscal responsibility to ask the questions and um, people have a right to know where the money's going for. If, if you don't ask, then, then you get criticized for not get asking for why $150,000 was spent on something. It's their money. They have a right to know what it is. Commissioner Lay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wasn't quizzing anyone in particular when we spend that much money, we need to know exactly where it goes and what we had to do for that. Because this has been drug around and beat and win around for seven or eight months. And uh, I think the police chief knows it, and the fire chief as well, that I'm 100% behind them as an elected official. Uh, I still want us to spend money that we might need at a later time if we can get it done for a, uh, a little lower price to get us some temporary housing over for, for our police department. You can certainly tell it's uh, election season with all the trash and mud that's been thrown. I won't do it, I promise you. I won't do it. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, just, again, thank everyone for coming. And today I was fortunate enough to attend, along with Commissioner Bellflowers, FTCC's partnership with Cumberland County and the, the local fire departments. Chief Hodges and Chief Lopez were there representing us alongside of the two of us. And they're going to have a training center out on Corporation Drive. And it's going to be one of those places where we can get the training that our department needs but regionally also so it's a great event and they it's a partnership too because they've come up with the money from the county and FTCC to do it tonight I had my first meeting with the mayor's youth leadership council it's a combination this year of key club uh, SGA and ROTC they're gonna be their project this year is Hope Mills Beautiful and they're going to also work toward uh, gateways, which at, at their school that they can beautify. So we're going to have, adopt highways and do some things with litter suites. Again, appreciate you coming this evening, and we have a motion. Thank you. I have some. Thank you. I got lots of it. All right. 